Assalamu alaikum everyone, yes I'm back with a new video. In today's video, we'll be making decorative cookies using slime and clay. Yes, you heard me right. So let's get started. Here is some air dry clay. Now with air dry clay, no oven is required since it dries by, what else? Air. It's perfect for crafting and creating decorative objects. I take the air dry clay out of the packaging and I spread it with the rolling pin. You don't want to make the clay very thin, otherwise there's a great chance it will tear. I try using the rolling pin in such a way so that the clay is uniformly stretched both horizontally and vertically. Use the cookie cutters to cut the clay in beautiful patterns. Very nice and easy. If you don't have a mold of a design you want for your project, no problem. Stenciling is here to save the day. Just make a temporary stencil out of paper. Choose and trace your design, then cut it out with a pair of scissors. Make the designs you truly love and add them to be part of your decorative cookies collection. Okay, after the design is well imprinted on the clay, it's time to get a crafting knife or a box cutter and start cutting the perimeter of the imprinted shape. Be careful not to cut something more than this. You only want to cut the clay surrounding the drawing. Cutting shapes by hand does lead to a few rough edges, so on to the next step. I fill a small bowl with water and I wet my finger. With this finger, I make a pass around the piece of clay that I previously shaped in order to make the surface smoother. Since the texture of the clay is a bit like dough, water just helps make the surface smoother. As a heads up, this is the best time to make small holes in your clay if you're planning to hang your object as an ornament. Once it's dry, take a string and thread it through the hole in the cookie air coats and tie a knot at the top. If you don't want to do this step and you just want to leave it as cookies on a tray, then just opt out of this part. Right after I finish with cutting and smoothing the clay surface, it's time to work on the design. I want to use a special clay sculpting tool to hollow out the filling of the shape. I apply a little bit of pressure on my tool so that it hollows out evenly. Don't take out too much. Go in slowly and take out bit by bit. This way you will avoid accidentally taking out more than needed. Slow and steady wins the race here. While scooping out the clay, you will end up with a rough looking interior. No worries. Wherever I feel that the clay surface is rough, I follow the same technique. You just wet your finger with water and make the clay smoother. When I'm happy with the result, I place my object on a dry and clean surface and I leave it until it dries for about 24 hours. I actually left this to dry for two days. Once the object is dry, I take a piece of sandpaper and I rub the surface of the clay where there are either small imperfections or rough surfaces. Now that I'm finished with the sandpaper, I get a stiff brush to remove any dust left from smoothing the surface. Now my ornaments are finished from molding and shaping. Now it's my favorite part of the creative process. I can paint my object by choosing among acrylic colors, glitter and decorate it with glues, beads, ribbons, flowers or anything else you can think of. So I've completed other decoration pieces. We have a snow person, gingerbread person, we have a candy cane, reindeer, heart, tree, a bauble, star, stocking, what's that, bell, and a snowflake. Time to fill it with slime. Use a variety of slime and fill in the hollowed out part of the shapes with slime. You can further decorate it with add-on of uh, glitter powder, beads, flowers, etc. Wearing your heart on your sleeve. This is both a fashion mistake and an idiom. If you wear your heart on your sleeve, it means you are very open about how and what you feel. Society encourages being reserved and closed off about our feelings and keen to avoid wearing our hearts on our sleeves. If you aim for the stars, you set very high goals and try to achieve maximum success. Your goals may not even be possible, but you're willing to try anyway. For example, she is aiming for the stars and wants to be a millionaire. A person who is starstruck is in awe of a famous person. They are usually very nervous or shy in their company. For example, she was starstruck when she met her favorite author at the bookstore. When the stars have aligned, things are perfect to do or try something. It can also be said to refer to good luck. For example, the stars aligned and they were able to win the championship. Saved by the bell means rescued from a difficulty at the last moment. For example, I was really saved by the bell when our teacher moved the math test to next week. Ring a bell is something that sounds familiar to you. For example, the name of the restaurant rings a bell, but I'm not sure if I've actually been there. With bells on. If you go somewhere with bells on, you are delighted and eager to go there. 
Of course I'll be there, with bells on. Bell the cat to undertake or agree to perform a risky, dangerous, or impossible job or task. Someone has to bell the cat and tell the boss we aren't going to come into work on Saturdays anymore. Be as sound as a bell, to be in good health or condition. When I broke my foot, I was in a cast for six weeks, but now I'm as sound as a bell. You can't unring a bell. This means that once something has been done, you have to live with the consequences as it can't be undone. For example, you can only learn from the mistakes that you make and not repeat them again because unringing the bell is not an option. Bells and whistles. These are additional features that are added to a product but are not essential to its basic function. My new car is great. It has all the latest bells and whistles. A tree is known by its fruit. Some people can talk a good talk, but not everyone can walk the walk. That's the basic meaning of this tree idiom, saying that a tree is known by its fruit, is referring to the way that people are best known for their actions or what they produce. The fruit is proof of the work you've been putting in, and without it, can you even call yourself a fruit tree? Bark up the wrong tree. Have you ever watched someone try and try again at something you know they'll never figure out? If so, you can use this tree idiom to even further confuse them. Don't go barking up the wrong tree is a phrase used to tell someone that they're nowhere close to what they're looking for or that they're spending a lot of time searching in the wrong direction. It's really just a different way to tell them that they're wasting their time. Oh yes, the ever popular phrase, money doesn't grow on trees. Maybe it's someone in your family who likes to spend money like it doesn't take work to earn it. Those people often need a reminder that you can't spend money without consequences, which gives you a good opportunity to say this tree idiom. Money doesn't grow on trees. References that money won't just replenish itself after you spend it. You pick a fruit, you leave the tree alone for a while, and a new fruit will eventually replace the old one. Money, unfortunately, doesn't work like that. Stocking feet. Wearing socks or stockings but no shoes. For example, I got locked out of the house in my stocking feet. Cold in one stocking. What naughty children are said to receive from Santa? When the kids are acting up during the holidays, just tell them they're going to get a cold in their stockings if they keep it up. Works every time. It just means punishment or undesirable outcome as a result of one's behavior or conduct. With a jail sentence looming, it seems like the greedy CEO who defrauded the company will be getting cold in its stockings this year. Silk Stocking District a section of a city that is dominated by the upper class. Even if you had the money, you wouldn't want to live in a silk stocking district. You'd be totally subject to the whims of your wealthy neighbors. The term snowflake is used in reference to individuals who deem themselves unique or special. This is a derogatory slang term for a person implying that they have an inflated sense of uniqueness, an unwarranted sense of entitlement, or are overly emotional, easily offended, and unable to deal with opposing opinions. Basically, just a person who thinks the whole world revolves around them. These kinds of people are often labeled snowflakes because they receive trigger warnings or any matter that might contain upsetting subjects. Someone who is easily hurt or offended by the statements or actions of others. Take the guilt off the gingerbread. What's the meaning of the phrase? Well, it removes an item's most attractive qualities. What's the origin of the phrase? This phrase has nothing to do with being guilty of anything, of course. Take the guilt off the gingerbread is just a misspelling. The word guilt here is G-I-L-T, not G-U-I-L-T. G-I-L-T refers to a thin layer of gold. Gingerbread is a form of cake, and although the association of the two words seem a little odd, gingerbread cakes were in fact gilded for festivals and other special events in the Middle Ages. The word gingerbread has been recorded in English since the 13th century. It was originally a form of simple cake flavored with treacle and, not surprisingly, ginger. It was and is frequently made as a form of biscuit by rolling out the dough and cutting it into shapes. Gold can be hammered to a minute thickness to form gold leaf. This can be gilded to many different surfaces including cake and is harmless when eaten in small quantities. Hence its use as a culinary decoration. So let's just use it in a sentence. I thought being a nurse would be all excitement but three patients vomited on me on my first day and that's really taken the guilt off the gingerbread. As white as snow. To refer to something that is extremely white. That kitten was as white as snow. To snowball into something. When a situation starts off as a small problem but suddenly grow to a much bigger problem. Usually one that is difficult to manage. To develop quickly into something bigger. You need to fix the problem fast. If more people find out, this could snowball into a huge problem. To be snowed in. 
to not be able to leave the house due to too much snow, to be trapped inside because of too much snow. The blizzard dropped so much snow we were snowed in for five days. To be pure as the driven snow, used to describe a person who is morally chaste or pure. I was surprised to hear that Dave cheated on the test. I always thought he was pure as a driven snow. So advice from a snow person. Be a jolly, happy soul. Spend time outdoors. Avoid meltdowns. Be well-rounded. Live well. Life is short. To be like a kid in a candy store. To be so excited about one's surrounding that one acts in a childish or silly way. Liam loves football so much that he's like a kid in a candy store anytime he steps into the stadium. It'll be like taking candy from a baby to be an easy task. If you think that this game would be like taking candy from a baby, you're seriously underestimating your opponents. Brain candy. Entertainment that is pleasant, enjoyable, and appealing to a broad audience, but not intellectually stimulating or demanding. The play won't make you think too hard about the meaning of life or the human condition, but it's a nice little piece of brain candy all the same. Candy coat, sugar coat. To attempt to make something seem better or more palatable than it actually is, especially something perceived as negative or unfavorable. Mom tried to candy coat the news by talking about how big the yard would be at the new house, but we were all sad about the move. Ear candy. Soft but pleasant or enjoyable music. That cafe plays some nice ear candy as background music. You'll enjoy it. Eye candy. A person or thing that is nice to look at, but has very little substance, meaning, or purpose. The film is filled to the brim with delightful eye candy, but there is no worthwhile plot or characters to do the visual justice. For deer, there's a phrase, a deer in the headlights, and there are some other variations as well. Be like a deer caught in the headlights, deer in headlights, like a deer in the headlights. Now this just simply means someone caught in a state of paralyzing surprise, fear, or bewilderment. Likened to the tendency of deer to freeze in place in front of an oncoming vehicle. Oh, poor deer. Sarah turned into a deer in the headlights when she forgot her lines in the middle of the play. He froze like a deer in the headlights when I caught him taking money out of the register. One smart cookie. It is used to describe a person that is clever and has a lot of good ideas. Don't judge a book by its cover. Call it is one smart cookie. To be caught with one's hand in the cookie jar. To be caught in the act of some wrongdoing. I never could figure out why the money in the tip jar was becoming less and less. That is, until I caught Dave with his hand in the cookie jar stealing tips when nobody was watching. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. There is nothing a person can do about the things that happen in life, so there's no reason to allow it to upset you. I'm pretty sad about not getting that job, but I guess that's just the way the cookie crumbles. One tough cookie. A determined person who is not easily discouraged or intimidated. It can also refer to someone that is hard to work with. Don't judge her by her size. Mimi is one tough cookie. Cookie cutter. It's used to describe something that is identical to others around it. I don't like the houses in this subdivision. They are just cookie cutter houses that look like every other house on the block. I want my house to be different. What do you want, a cookie? This phrase is a sarcastic response to someone who is looking for praise for some minor or insignificant accomplishment. So you wash the dishes. What do you want, a cookie? So the proverb learning is a scepter to some, a bauble to others. Scepter is an ornamented rod or staff borne by rulers on ceremonial occasions as an emblem of authority. Bauble means a showy but worthless or useless thing, a trinket. So it means that ilm se baad log fayda uthate hain aur baaz ke liye ye sirf zibaish ka kaam deta hai. These make your own decorative slime filled cookies, tree ornaments and decorations are quick and easy to craft making them an ideal DIY for the busy holiday season. The air drying clay means that there's no firing or a kiln needed. You just roll, cut and stamp, fill it with slime and your decoration is good to go. These are perfect to use as personalized gift tags or as decorations to hang from your tree. These DIY ornaments are an easy and fun way to bring extra magic to any of your decoration conundrum. Get your occasions and milestones celebrated with these special handmade ornaments. Decorating your event is essential because you want to make sure you create the perfect ambience.
it should scream out what you are trying to celebrate and let guests know just how much attention you pay to the details. You can personalize these ornaments in a great way to provide your loved ones with a one-of-a-kind gesture that perfectly captures your relationship. These make great gifts or are a perfect way to display your special milestones and memories on your own tree. Layered up colored decorations to give more sense of abundance. It doesn't have to match, just add in splashes of timeless and classic colors of gold, silver, green, and red to coordinate with the colors of your cookie slimes creations. Flowers, I have kept it to a minimum, adding in just red and gold faux flowers to keep the eclectic theme going. To replete the space at the back, I added these gorgeous ready-made gift boxes stuffed with shredded paper filler that can be crumpled for additional volume. Alongside it, I have added tinsel garlands of red, gold, silver, and green. These metallic tinsel twist garlands will add the shine and looks very eye-catching under the light or sunshine, can easily highlight your home decoration, and will always result in a thoroughly festive feel. The look demonstrates that a tightly packed setting can also pack a festive punch, leaving little exposed table space. This display is filled with luxurious pieces, achieving a festive treasure trove feel. The beauty of this look is that it's opulent enough for any occasion, but not overly festive, so the pieces can be used from season to season. So everyone, if you really enjoyed watching this video, you know what to do. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, press the bell icon so you're notified of any future videos that I might post. Leave a constructive comment and share this video. I know, I know, it's a lot to do, but I'll really appreciate it. As always, thank you so much for your support and encouragement. Thanks for watching. Until next time, Allah Hafiz. Bye. Jazakallah khair, thank you so much for watching till the end of this video. If you want to watch similar videos, please check out the playlist right here. Check it out.